Some people know them as sketch videos, whiteboard animations, explainer videos, or even go one step further and call them whiteboard animated explainer videos. Whatever it is that you want to call them, I'm going to show you how to make one in this quick video. Look, lots of people want to create YouTube channels, but they would rather poke themselves in the eye with a rusty fork than appear on camera themselves. So instead, they want a quick and easy way to create animations that preferably doesn't need a degree from art school. If that's you, then I've got you covered. Another reason why these type of videos are so popular is that they're great for visual storytelling and keeping the viewer hooked. Think about it. How many people in the world can you sit and stare at for over 10 minutes, face to face, listening intently to what they're saying without getting distracted? Not many, I bet. I mean, I can only manage about five minutes listening to my own wife, so what chance do I have with a stranger? Whereas animated explainers change constantly and guide people through the video, twisting and turning and holding their interest much longer. There are statistics to prove all of what I'm telling you, but it's late at night, I'm tired, and I can't be arsed googling it. So let's just say, visual stories hold the audience's attention 62% longer than a traditional talking head video which may or may not be accurate. Look at these channels that have had huge success using this strategy. Stay to the end and I'll show you how to learn everything there is to know about these videos for free. Anyway, let's cut to the chase. In my opinion, the best software to use for these type of videos is VideoScribe. It works on Macs and Windows, is affordable, easy to learn, and has tons of good features. You can learn more about VideoScribe in this review video. But for now, I'm just going to show you how to create videos like this one, and it's done in a few simple steps. So once you've downloaded and installed VideoScribe, you launch the application and log in with the credentials that they've sent you. Once you launch it, it's going to come up with this screen, and you can either choose from a pre-made template that you can just change and tailor it to suit your video, or you can click on create a new scribe, or you can load one of your old or existing ones that you've already created. I'm going to click on create a new scribe and start from scratch. So just a real quick overview of the navigation and how this works. Now what we're looking at now is a blank template. At the top right, you've got some shortcuts. This one is if you want to use the default music that they provide, or if you want to upload your own music as like a backing soundtrack. The microphone icon is basically if you want to do a voiceover. So you've got two options here really. You can press record and then you can just add a voiceover to your video. Choose whichever microphone it is that you're going to use. Or secondly, you can click on this import mp3. Now I tend to do this, I tend to create my audio in another application, you can even use your phone if you want, and then just import it. And the reason I do that is because my audio is very hard to get a script right the first time without any editing. And unfortunately, even though you can press record and just add your audio, you've got to get it right first time. There's no ability to kind of cut any of that out. So I just import it. Next up, you've got the background options. Now in here, you can change the color. You can add your own hex value in if you want, or you can just select one of the default ones. And you've got various different kind of textures and effects as well, as well as the option to put a vignette on there. So just as an example, if we choose this texture up here, then it almost looks a little bit like a chalkboard. Let's just change that back to a white. If you put it on white, it's actually clearer to see the different textures as well. Now the next option is your hand, so this is your default hand type, and if you look on the left hand side, there's lots of different types, different skin tones, different types of pencils or crayons or whatever it is that they're holding. There's a few comedy ones in here as well with uh, like a werewolf and a skeleton and just random bits and bobs. Or you can just choose a pen if you wish as well. Now it's worth noting that anything you set within them options is almost like your default for the entire project. You can change some of them individually, like the hand type you can change per image or per text box, but these are gonna be your default. At the bottom, you've got a way of navigating around. You can zoom in, zoom out. You've got these buttons here, which are images, text, and charts, and I'll show you them in a second. And then at the top left, that's where you can save your project, which I would recommend to save as you go along. Now let's look at the images. So when we open the images, you've got a search box here. So if there's something in particular that you want to use, you can just search in there. On some of the images, you'll notice this little red line. That means it's a premium image. So when you actually buy VideoScribe, you'll be given an upsell option to actually sign up for premium images. It's up to you whether you choose it. I haven't, and there's still plenty of image options that I've got. 
Now if you just want to browse, then on the left hand side, you've got loads of different categories as well. So you've got some animated images, some static ones, you've got various different ones in here. So if we have a look at characters, you'll see some of these images have got these little um, lines on them, the red, green and blue lines. What that means is that you can customise them colours. We click on it and it adds it into our display. Now if we double click on that image, this is going to give us the image properties. Now you can see here in the middle, skin tone, hair colour, primary colour and secondary colour. They are the customisable options that we've got. So we can change that red top to a purple top. Now some of the other options you've got to do is you've got to look at these drawing options. Now there's various different ones. You've got draw, move in and fade in and they're exactly like they sound. So draw means that the actual image will be drawn. And if you want to change the hand, you can change it in here and this will apply just to that one image. You can also set it to no hand if you like. So if we set it to no hand and look at the preview, you can see that it just draws itself. Move in is when you want that image to come onto the screen from a different direction. So you can actually choose the direction it comes in. You can do smooth or bounce or uniform. So in some of them it's worth kind of putting at the top and then bouncing it. And then at the bottom, you need to pay attention to this bit. This is actually one of the hardest parts with using VideoScribe. It's getting your timings right. So especially when you've created your audio, you've got to put your graphics around that, but keep it in time. So you'll constantly be changing these. So your animate time is how long it takes to actually finish that animation. So for example, let's change that to half a second. Let's change that back to draw. Now, did you see how quick that drew? Whereas if we change that to two and a half seconds, so as you can see, that's the time it takes to complete that animation. Pause is exactly like it sounds, that's how long it's going to stay on that image before moving on to the next bit. And transition is the speed in which it tran transitions into the next one as well. But whether it's text or images, these are going to be the same options that you use and you'll soon get the hang of it. There are other options under graphics filters, you can add a few effects like a blur, change the brightness, saturation, contrast, you can put drop shadows on there. I'll be honest, the only one I sometimes use is drop shadow, I don't really use this that often, I don't feel like it's absolutely necessary. Now one thing to note is that when you add an image or text, the actual display will default in on that image. So it'll put it in the centre of the screen and if it needs to zoom in or zoom out, it will do. Now let's just say you wanted that on a different part of the screen. So this is what people are going to see on your video. So if we move that over to the left hand side and then right click and just click on set camera. Now there is another way you can do that, instead of right clicking on set camera, you can just literally highlight the uh, image that you want and then click on the set camera button at the bottom. Or if you want a third way of doing it, you can expand your image using that little arrow, click on change camera settings and click on set camera. And you've got a few other options in there, it's actually like a little quick way of changing your animation times and your pause times as well. So it's up to you if you prefer to use that or if you prefer to open the properties of each item. So that's the image sorted. Next up we're going to add some text. So you type in what you want. You've got various different fonts in here as well and if you click on add fonts you used to have the ability to add any fonts which was really good and that's gone now sadly. Hopefully they'll reintroduce that someday. But they do have a large selection of fonts that you can add in. Select the font you want. I like to use that bangers font quite a bit. And you can change a few things in here. So you can change the color of the font. You can change the formatting. Depending on what the font is, some of them will let you put some bold and italic as well. And then we just click on done. Now again, it'll put it straight in the center. You can resize it using the corner squares. And just like you can with images, you can also change the animation. So you can have that drawn, move in or fade in. And again, you just set your timings at the bottom as well. So it's really straightforward. It's, um, it might look complicated at first, but you've literally just got the same settings for almost anything that you do. It's just about getting that movement right. And again, you can either set the camera or we could maybe zoom in a little bit and set camera. Now, once you're done, if you want to obviously keep testing it and seeing how it works and checking that it's in line with your audio as well, if you highlight one of the actual items, you've got two buttons up here. So you've got the play from current element, which will literally, whatever you've got highlighted, it will play your video from that point. 
Whereas if you press the one next to it, it'll play that video exactly from the start. Let's just add some music. And just give that a test. Now it could be that on our next part of our video we want a different background or we don't want to be on this slide so we literally just drag to the side or zoom in, zoom out, find another blank spot on that canvas and then add the next part of your video. And one thing I should have pointed out earlier if I didn't already is that you can upload your own image. So again click on the little upload icon and then just add in whatever it is that you want to add in. Once that you're done and you're happy with your creation just click on the little export download button at the top and you click on download and that's it. It really is as simple as that. Now if you want to listen to my review and learn all the good and bad things about VideoScribe then check out the video that's coming up shortly. But I did say at the start that you could learn how to use this awesome application for free and here's how. Skillshare is a premium online learning platform where many influencers create courses and show off their mad skills. There are some excellent video scribe courses on Skillshare that will leave you ahead of the pack and leave you an animation ninja. So if that's something that interests you, then check out the link in the description that will get you 30 days free access to premium content. More than enough to level up your skills. And I'll see you next time.